Hello, this is the second of this uh, series of uh, devotions for Advent based on the epistles and gospels of each Sunday and uh, a selection of organ pieces. And uh, this is the for the second Sunday of Advent. And uh, I will begin by the choral prelude by Bach, Bischen erleuchtet den Morgenstern. Uh, uh, how 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 the uh, the morning star uh, is uh, is so so beautiful and bright, uh, something like that. Um, uh, and this is a choral prelude. This is quite. A, a, I think this is quite rare with Bach. It's a, it's it's a piece from the uh, from the Feast of the Epiphany. How brightly shines the morning star. Uh, that's the more correct translation. And there's uh, uh, one of his first cantatas is on this theme. Uh, but it, I found it quite difficult to find a chorale prelude by Bach on this chorale. So I searched on the internet and I found one and I was able to print it, it wasn't copyrighted. Uh, so um, I just played it through once to uh, uh, get rid of the, some of the, uh, the, the worst type reading errors. But it's not a finely polished piece, it's, uh, it's uh, so you probably hear quite a few bum notes but I'll do the best I can to give a good interpretation of this rather beautiful uh, piece of counterpoint. And after the, uh, the reflection on the epistle, I will be playing Es ist ein Rosch entsprungen of Johannes Brahms, uh, the, a rose, uh, a rose is, uh, is uh, blooming. This rose uh, can be seen as um, a symbol of many things, uh, either, of, uh, either of the root of Jesse and the, uh, the branch, uh, the, the Messiah, or this can be uh, the Holy Wisdom, the, the Heilig, uh, Sophia, uh, the feminine principle of God uh, blooming. So this can be seen in in, in that way too. And at the end I will uh, play a piece of D3 books to Huda, a Shakon, which is a rather a rather beautiful piece and very typical of his style. So now I will begin with the with the bark.
the epistle from Blessed Paul, uh, Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Brethren, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. This is a message of hope. We need to learn what we are taught and to be kind with each other, to see the best of the, the person we are talking with. St. Paul emphasizes that Jesus was a Jewish teacher. He was Jewish. He was brought up among the people of Israel in order that the old prophecies may bring us this hope that he fulfilled in himself. What is more important is that this hope was not restricted to the Jewish people, but would shine out to us all, everywhere in the world, from all nations and cultures, all faiths. I am especially fond of the Stanford setting of the Song of Peace, with the words of Isaiah, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is the theme of the Sunday of Advent. The description of what this would mean for the world brings us hope that there would be no more suffering or violence, that uh, uh, carnivorous animals would live with other animals like sheep, very difficult, and lambs, very difficult to imagine, but this is a symbol of the promise of universal peace. This is what theologians call the eschatological kingdom, the paradise beyond the veil. The root of Jesse is the descent from King David, meaning the promised Messiah. The people of Israel hoped for a great king who would take the throne of David. Isaiah uses a Hebrew word to mean stump rather than the root, meaning the remnant that would barely survive. What seemed to be dead and withered away brought new life in the Messiah Jesus Christ. Paul refers to this promise, prophecy as he acknowledged Christ to be the, the Messiah. Christ's humanity was just as important as his divinity as Son of God and the Virgin Mary. The Jesse tree is an important symbol of Advent. Many stained glass windows in churches depict a tree with Jesse at the roots and Jesus at the top branch. It formed the basis of the Advent calendar uh, that used to be used to teach this narrative to children before it became more materialistic. So continuing with the theme of the, uh, of the, uh, the rod from the stem of Jesse and this theme of, uh, um, of the Heilige Sophia, the Holy Wisdom, I will now play 
Johannes Brahms. Es ist ein Ross entsprungen. taken from the from St. Luke. <coughs> At that time Jesus said to his disciples, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own souls that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. These uh, eschatological uh, narratives are quite difficult to understand. 
and often lead, lead us to many errors. But we are finite. This earth is finite. Everything we know, see, hear, smell, taste, will have an end. This is the very theme of Advent. The final judgment and recapitulation of the entire history of salvation. However, there were several judgments. There were several moments, there were several comings of Christ. Uh, and Christmas will be the coming of Christ uh, as an infant. At Easter, he came as a redeemer. He rose from the dead. We read of dread and fear, terrifying ideas like meteorites falling on the earth, of the kind that made the dinosaurs extinct. We read about this kind of thing all the time. Mega tsunamis. Briefly, all the worst fears of our death and the destruction of all we have ever known. Perhaps we do well to consider the signs of heaven and earth the constellations of stars millions of light years away, the sheer infinity of the universe, and perhaps a multitude of multiverses. As Shakespeare famously wrote, there are more things in heaven and on earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Even on this earth we know so little about what lies under the sea and within the earth's crust. We live in a time when even science is showing its rapid limits. There are so many things about which we know so little. There are already signs of the moon, the sun and the stars. Because everything works in a very precise mechanism. Accidents like meteors randomly hitting planets do ha happen. But the orbits of planets around the stars moons around the planets, the revolutions of our earth are completely predictable. They are the work of a creator God. Most of us will only ever see the stars from here on earth when the sky is clear and free of clouds. Some very privileged uh, people have been able to go up into space as astronauts and have been able to see these wonders without the uh, uh, without the uh, the veiling effect of the earth's atmosphere these heavenly bodies are silent yet they proclaim their words to the end of the earth everything that we know in nature has been made to serve man on condition of our respecting it romantics including our modern uh, environmental people tend to see humanity as only a part of nature. We are in a way. We have the same needs as most animals. We need to eat, we need to reproduce, or at least some of us need to reproduce. And we are appointed to die and render our bodies to the earth. However, God gave us responsibility for our environment, a special dignity of the human person. This wholeness of creation is a message made, made from signs in heaven and earth. Are these signs, even the catastrophes we suffer, herald of the end? We have arrived at a time of extreme fear and panic, of alleged climate change, based on data that is not without precedent in history. The outside temperature is about 7 or 8 centigrade, altogether typical of uh, early December. The coronas has become a pandemic on the subject of blind panic on the part of our political leaders. And we have to, we have to come to uh, realize that they don't know what they're doing. Saying one thing, they do another thing. They contradict themselves all the time. And that only adds to our anguish and our anxiety. We are afraid of death because there is something beyond our control. 
and we project this fear on everything else. Advent also reflects autumn, the late autumn, a time when many of us die because our body is at its lowest ever. However, the signs in the sun, the moon and the stars are the heralds of God's kingdom, the final triumph on the last day. On Good Friday there was an earthquake and bodies of the dead rose to life. We await a new heaven and a new earth. Yes, indeed, I think about that glorious anthem by Bainton. The old man of sin and evil has to, be, has to be destroyed by fire. When we bury the dead, we sing, at the absolute, after the end of Mass, Libera me domine de morte eterna, in die illa tremenda, quando celi movendi sunt et terra, Dum veneris judicare seculum per ignem. Free me, Lord, from eternal death in that tremendous day when the heavens and the, and the earth will be moved, when thou wilt come to judge the age by fire. That's pretty frightening. This generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The meaning of these words is mysterious, and the terror cannot be attenuated. The end of the world has been us throughout history, but the time when it will occur is unknown. Many have tried to predict a date and a time but the predictions failed. Like our own death, it will catch us unawares. We have to be ready, ready within, ready in our hearts. A world of caution about our Weltschmerz, a German word which means our weariness from all the ills of our world. Films and books are full of this apocalyptic theme from nuclear war to being hit by a meteorite, to the effects of human pollution on the environment, UFOs and aliens, you name it. Many become obsessed and it affects our mental health, like conspiracy theories and other ways to try to find an explanation for our angst. I have to admit being worried about the coming of an Orwellian dystopia. Usually in history, when something like Nazi Germany happens, mankind reacts and defeats it, exorcises the evil from its midst, albeit imperfectly. What is more likely to happen before such a universal scenario is our own death, and that is what we have to be ready for. Our popular culture is full of zombies, nuclear war, capitalism, viruses, mega tsunamis. We see ourselves like characters in a film. Eventually we humans will earn the right to end the world, all die in atrocious agony. Out with a whimper or a bang. I remember the famous poem Darkness by Byron, a very dark piece written in the very early 19th century, at about the same time as Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. We experienced our anguish 200 years before we are doing now. We have indeed arrived at a new romantic era. We have become critical of uh, an excess of rationalism. We need to be human. We need to refine our souls. This, uh, this new era needs to be channeled. Life is finite, too short. I had nightmares as a child of nuclear war. The 1970s were more of a pit than the world is now. We hear about climate change, but it seems no different to me living where I live from 40 years ago. 
There is too much pollution and we do need to do something about it. But without the narrative of preachers walking down Oxford Street with placards in front and behind uh, proclaiming that the end is nigh. Let us get beyond the caricatures and the hysteria. The, world, the words, be not afraid, come up time and time again in the scripture. The war is already won, and Christ has triumphed. I will now finish with the piece of Dietrich Buchdehuda, the Shakun 